There are tons of excellent photo editors available for the Mac, but it's a different story when it comes to photo managers. Once you start getting seriously into photography, keeping on top of your collection and managing it in such a way that you can easily locate a photo is a bit of a struggle. The gold standard for that photo management is Adobe Lightroom, thanks in part to its database-driven catalog system. But if that Adobe subscription is not to your liking, then there is an excellent alternative. I first became acquainted with ACDC's Photo Studio for Mac on the previous version 8 release. And I'm pleased to say ACDC have made some solid improvements to this version 9 point release. Before we get into the pros and cons of this software, let's just talk briefly about which software niche it sits within. Photo Studio 9 is a DAM or Digital Asset Management Suite. It works in a similar way to Adobe Lightroom, but also to On One Photo Raw, DxO Photo Lab, and Capture One. Digital asset management apps enable you to make catalogs of your photos and then to view them and more importantly, filter them. However, they also enable you to process your images. And so, assuming you don't have to make any large edits, and are only processing raw or high quality file formats like TIFF, they're all you're gonna need. All right, so let's talk about that photo catalog system. It's all split up into three main tabs. The first of which is the Manage tab. So the Manage screen is without a doubt the key area of value for ACDC Photo Studio 9 on the Mac. I would say that it's even more fully featured than something like Adobe Lightroom with a couple of very small catchers, which probably don't apply to most people's situations. Now, if you look at this screen, we've got the files on the left here and a histogram and some basic EXIF information underneath it. We've got our thumbnails here, and I can, of course, change the size on these if I want to shrink them down to see more or enlarge them if I like. And over on the right, you've got this extremely versatile filtering system. You've got categories, which you set. You've got the ratings, which you set. You've got the colors. You can apply any color that you like to a photo or a series of photos, and you set it. You've got your keywords, obviously, saved searches, and we've also got this calendar down here so we can filter by year and it's only showing in here the, the things I've actually added to the library so far but it's incredibly comprehensive and if you're looking for a great way of managing your photographs particularly if you've got a larger photo library then this is without doubt the best you'll get outside of Adobe Lightroom. So yes, the actual asset management part of Photo Studio, that Manage tab, is excellent. While Lightroom, Photo Raw, and Photo Lab let you rate your photos and give them color tags, Photo Studio goes a little bit further. In particular, I really like the calendar filter that enables you to quickly and efficiently drill down to a specific date. But equally, features like the categories, and the saved searches are excellent. Saved searches are, of course, the closest you're gonna to get to Lightroom's collections feature, and it's something you don't find in many other apps. If I have anything negative to say about the Manage tab in Photo Studio, it's that the interface owes more to Microsoft Windows than to Mac OS, and could certainly benefit from looking a bit more Mac-like. It's also a densely packed interface, often uses quite small icons for important interface tools. There are also some great features tucked away in the app, including an advanced batch processing tool that enables you to add timestamps, change file formats, copy, add presets, move, rename, resize, and add metadata, watermarks, or borders in bulk.
the view tab is the equivalent of the Lightroom loop. The idea of this mode is to view the subsection of photos that you've selected in the Manage tab. So the idea of the View tab is to further refine your collection and to go through the subsection that you picked on the old Manage screen and decide which shots you're gonna work on further. And there are several ways you can go about that from very simple to more complicated. On a very simple level, you can simply tag a photo. So if I hit the backslash key, and if you look up here in the top right, when I hit that, you'll see that the tagged icon is lit up and you can just arrow your way through these and tag all the shots that you wanna work on. You can also, if you want, give everything a score. So if I press, for instance, control four, if you look up at the rating here, when I press control four, I've given it a four star rating. And you can do a similar thing for colors. If I press command six, for instance, it gives it a blue rating, which you can see there. And so it's a pretty simple system. You've got your main photo on the screen here. You've got your film strip down the bottom, you cycle through and you just pick out and rate the photos that you want to work on further. The final tab in Photo Studio is the Develop tab, which is where you add all the non-destructive edits to your photos that you've chosen to work on. Last week, I reviewed Affinity Photo 2 and complained that Serif made their app deliberately different in ways that weren't always conducive to simple photo editing. And I'm pleased to say that ACDC's photo editing tools are boring as batshit. All the sliders are named as you'd expect and work in the ways you'd expect them to work. Sometimes boring as batshit is good. Well, guys, this is the gloriously boring develop tab. You've got all your standard uh, sliders over here on the right. You know, you can drop the highlights down, bring up the shadows, tweak the vibrance and saturation, all the good stuff, all the regular stuff that you'd want to use. It's got a few trickier things you can play around with if you want, such as these tone wheels, the way these work here. So we're in the highlights here. And you can alter the saturation and hue of those if you want. You can do that in two ways. You can either drag these little pointers on the side there, or you can just grab the circle. So the further out you go, the more saturated the color is, and you can see the hue. So I'm going over into the purples there and the highlights, and I can drag that back. So for instance, if I just wanted to add a little bit of warmth to the highlights, I would just come down towards the yellows here. And if you don't want to go crazy, just keep that circle fairly close to center or drag it out and get them really warmed up. It's up to you. It's a quite nice little feature. So over on the right here, we have one of the big new features in Photo Studio 9, which is this right hand develop pane, which features three new things that ACDC have added. We've got presets, snapshots, and history. History, I'm sure you've seen before, and that is to walk back any changes you've made. It records all the tweaks that you've made to the image and you can revert back at any time. Snapshots just enables you to record the state of the image at that moment in time. So if you're gonna make some substantial changes, save a snapshot and then do what you need to do knowing that you could revert back to that state that you recorded in that snapshot if you prefer it back the way it was. And finally, we've also got presets. Yes, presets. Some of these are editing presets. So for instance, we could tweak the clarity here, but we've also got some stylistic ones. So I can click on New York, for instance, you get this weird, I don't know what you'd call that <laughs> kind of look, retro. That's actually quite nice, a sort of washed out Polaroid style look. But the important thing from my perspective is that you can, of course, create your own presets which is much more useful because you can set things up that work with the, your camera and the lenses you use and uh, the environment you shoot in it's much more useful to create your own presets and you can do that just by clicking the old plus sign up here and your presets of the list so that's a useful feature the toolbar in the develop tab has everything you'll ever need to process your raw photos and while it does include features like the color wheels, it's all quite rudimentary. 
if the constant onslaught of AI based tools in something like Luminar Neo turns you off, then the old school emphasis on simple finessed editing tools in Photo Studio is bound to be a winner. That's not to say that ACDC have completely ignored machine learning tools though. I've already touched on a couple of the new features in this latest version of Photo Studio, but ACDC have added other sensible upgrades. The feature they seem most pleased with is the new face detection and recognition features. I'm a landscape photographer, and so this is not something that will be of great use to me, but when I let it scan my personal photo library and its family photographs, it did a great job. That new develop pane with its preset history and snapshot tools is a welcome and sensible update. There have also been some tweaks to the interface, the addition of an info palette on the view and develop tabs and a metadata removal tool which cleans your image of EXIF information. Here's what I consider to be Photo Studio 9's most compelling features. One, it's subscription free and reasonably priced. At just 90 US dollars, it offers everything you need in a digital asset management app with no monthly overheads. Furthermore, you can purchase additional licenses for half the cost. Two, the emphasis throughout the app is on functionality, not fluff. Everything is sensibly named, the management and development workflow is logical, and pretty much everything can be tweaked to work the way you want. Three, like Lightroom, it's a database-driven app, which means it's quick and offers enhanced rating, labeling tags, location data, keyword, categorization, and search features. Four, it's a non-destructive raw editor that saves the raw edits in XMP files or embedded in a DNG images metadata. That means that you can see things like the color labels in other apps such as Adobe Camera Raw. Five, it feels cohesive and logical. There's a simple flow to processing from import through to final edits that is lacking in other digital asset and photo editing software. Now, no software is perfect, of course, and here's where I think Photo Studio 9 could do with a bit of work. One, ACDC are clearly a Windows first development company, which is why the interface lacks the finesse and Apple design language that Mac users have come to expect. Two, I'm all in favor of keeping things simple, but the software could definitely benefit from more sophisticated masking tools. You get brush, radial, and linear gradient masks, and that's your lot. While I like the focus on old school raw editing, AI masking is hugely beneficial and would greatly improve the functionality of the raw editing tools. Three, the map does not show location data in nested folders. So for instance, I can't view map location data for everything in a main year folder just the date-based subfolders. I can't imagine this would be a tough fix and it would massively improve the utility of that map mode. Four, the scaling on the histogram seems broken to me. Whether I click on an overexposed, underexposed or correctly exposed image, the histogram is usually so flat that it's effectively useless. Five, and this is admittedly a bit niche, but it's also a bit of a deal breaker for me. ACDC cannot process compressed Fujifilm RAW files from my X-T4. Uncompressed RAWs take up a lot more space and offer no great advantage over the compressed versions. And so not many Fujifilm owners use them, myself included. Photo Studio 9 is pitched squarely at hobbyist photographers rather than professionals, and I don't say that as a negative. This is a great little application and one that fits its niche perfectly. The developers have tailored the app's feature set to best suit the series hobbyist or semi-pro. It's a one-time 
subscription-free application with a feature set that will not go out of fashion in a hurry. Even if you decide not to pay the very reasonable upgrade fees from previous versions, I can't see anything in here that will stop the app from being useful for years to come. ACDC have adopted a sensible, measured approach to the app's features rather than going for the kitchen sink strategy of other developers. Yes, the interface could do with some work, but while it's not the loveliest app to look at, the design ops for function over form were clearly laid out sensibly designed sliders and tools. If you're looking to ditch Adobe's expensive subscription plans and you can do without the AI masking tools of Lightroom, then Photo Studio 9 comes highly recommended. Alright guys, that'll do us for this review. Do you use Photo Studio for Mac? If you're an Adobe user, does this software tempt you? I say take the free trial for a spin and see if it's to your liking. As always, let me know your thoughts on this software in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more photography and drone related content from me. Till the next time guys, ta-ta.